This is intended to be a very quick review over our fact, the factoring quadratics that we've talked about, factoring polynomials, because we do have some cubics. Um, so, and how to use this flow chart. Um, first question, is there a GCF that can be factored out of the whole expression? Please make sure you do that first. So I'm going to come back to this as we work through um, some problems. So right here, first problem, um, is there a GCF? Yes, there's an X in each term. Remember, terms are separated by plus or minus signs. This is a binomial because there's two terms. So when I factor this, I can factor out an X. It's just the distributive property backwards, and I'm left with x plus 3. That is done. It is factored. There's nothing else to do. Here, is there a GCF? Yes. Look at the numbers. I can factor out a 4, and the variables, I can factor out an x. I'm left with 2x minus 3. You can always check this with the distributive property. 4x times 2x is 8x squared. 4x times negative 3 minus negative 12x. Next problem, is there a GCF? No. So where do we go next? No. How many terms are in the polynomial? Well, there are three terms, which makes it a trinomial. Is it a special case? We're going to talk about those in just a minute. It's, it's not a special case. No. Is the coefficient of x squared a 1? Yes, it was. So then it says to do a diamond problem and factor. So that's what we're going to do. So you can do a diamond problem. Remember the product goes here, the sum here. So the product is negative 12, the sum is negative 4. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to a negative 12, which means one's negative and one's positive. And the difference of the two numbers has to be 4. So that means we're looking at negative 6 and a positive 2. So I do the diamond problem and I can factor. I don't need the box because it's just an x squared. So I'm going to have x minus 6 times x plus 2. And that's done. Number four, remember the first question to ask, is there a GCF? Yes, there's a 3 that can factor out. So you do that first. Now I have to look at what's left. How many terms does it have? Three. Is it a special case? No. Is it just is the coefficient of the x squared of one? Yes. Do a diamond problem and factor. So our product is 10, our sum negative 7. So to have a negative sum and a positive product means both numbers are negative. So negative 5 and negative 2. I don't need a box because it's just an x squared. The 3 is one of the factors. And then we have x minus 5 x minus 2. Remember the order wouldn't matter. It could be x minus 2 and x minus 5. That part wouldn't make a difference. Next problem. Is there a GCF? No. Okay, so then let's look at our factoring flow chart. Um, how many terms are in the polynomial? 3. Is it a special case? No. Is the coefficient of x squared a 1? No. It was a 2. So do a modified diamond to fill in the box and factor. So remember our modified diamond, you're multiplying 2 times negative 5, and the sum is negative 9. I need two numbers, one's negative, one's positive, so it must be a negative 10 and a positive 1. Remember, those are not what goes in the parentheses. That's how you break up the x's. The 2x squared goes here, the negative 5 goes here. I'm going to place the negative 10x here and the 1x here. It wouldn't matter, though. I could switch those around. Then I'm going to um, pull common factors out of the top row. So I would have a 2x and an x. That makes this a minus 5, and this would have to be a plus 1. You can double check the multiplication in all the boxes. So we get 2x plus 1, and x minus 5 would be my factorization. Next problem. Start with the first question. Is there a GCF? Yes. I can factor out a 2, so I start with that. Now I still have a quadratic, so I need to go through. There's three terms. It's not a special case. The coefficient of the x squared is not a 1, so I need to do a modified diamond and a box. So I multiply the 3 times negative 8. So again, one number is negative, one's positive. 
Um, I'm thinking a 12 and a negative 2 would give me that. Remember that tells me what goes in the box. Now the 2 is not part of this right now. It's going to tag along in my answer. So I'm going to have a 12x and a minus 2x. Factor out a 3x. This would be an x. This would be a plus 4. This would be a minus 2. So don't forget the 2. It's part of your answer. 3x minus 2 and x plus 4 is your factorization. Now suppose up here, like say up here you thought, oh, say you forgot the box and you did this. If you would just take one minute, or not even that, to double check and say x times x is x squared. Oops, I'm supposed to get a 2x squared. That's not right. I must have forgot something, and then hopefully you would realize you forgot to do the box. See right here, 3x times x is 3x squared. That's a really easy way to check and make sure. Next problem. Let's go through our factoring flow chart. We have x squared minus 16. Is there a GCF? No. How many terms are in the polynomial? Two. Is it a special case? Well, we have them listed here. We're not dealing with the sum and difference of two cubes right now, but we have the difference of two squares. So if we look back, that's what we have, the difference of two squares. So using the formula, a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. So this is just x plus 4 times x minus 4. Done. Here. If you went through all those, you would find yourself at the same place. This is the difference because it's subtraction of two squares. The square root of 4x squared is 2x, so we get 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. Next problem, x squared plus 25. Let's look through here. There's no GCF. There are two terms. Is it a special case? Well, it's two squares, but it's not the difference. That means since it's not a special case, we're done. It can't be factored. So we're going to say prime. You can call it prime if it can't be factored, or you can say not factorable. So there is no formula for the sum of two squares. Next problem. Um, if you went through that factoring flow chart, now this one, you could just end up with a regular diamond problem. We've talked about this, but this is a special case because this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. It's a plus right here. So if this is that special case, it would be x minus 3 times x minus 3. And really doing a di this doesn't really save you much from doing the diamond problem, but um, we could write this as x minus 3 quantity squared. So the pattern on this, if you look at these formulas, this is a perfect square trinomial, is um, the first term has to be a perfect square, and the last term has to be a perfect square, and there has to be a plus in front of the last term. Then if you were to take um, the square root of your first and last term, multiply them together and double them, that's what has to be in the center. So if you come back up here at the one we were just doing, um, this is a 1. So if you take the square root of 9 is 3, 3 times 1 is 3, double it, you get 6. So that's how we know that that would work. So really, number 10, not a big deal to just do a diamond problem and do it that way. However, look at number 11. So on number 11, we have a perfect square, we have a perfect square. So I don't want to have to do a modified diamond in a box. There's no GCF. So if I just try it, I get 3x. Since this is plus, it's going to be plus. So I get 3x plus 4. I'm going to write it out so we can check the middle term. If you FOIL this, if you do the outside, you get 12x, the inside 12x, so that gives you your 24x, so then you would know that was right. We could write it as 3x plus 4 quantity squared. Recognizing that special case saves you a lot of work. Um, how you can tell for sure, that square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12, double it, you get 24. That's how the pattern works. Next problem, this one has 4, so what's, that, what's our chart say about that? Um, if you get to the how many terms are in the polynomial, four terms, try grouping, and I even drew a little picture of a box there for you. So we're going to make a box, put one term in each box. The constant's going to go down here. The highest power goes here. Common factor out the top row, we get an x squared, which makes this an x, which makes this a minus 5, 
which makes this a plus 2. So we get x squared plus 2 times x minus 5. Next problem, another one with 4. Same strategy. So we have x cubed, 3x squared, minus 4x, minus 12. Pull out your common factors. And we get x squared minus 4 times x plus 3. But wait, we're not done. This is the difference of two squares. So when we factor that, we get x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x plus 3. That is the complete factorization of this problem. Check for things like that. So hopefully that helped you if you were struggling. This puts it kind of all together, shows you how to use the factoring flowchart, um, and hopefully that helped you learn a little bit more.